I've been banned from going round to the garage. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If I'm here and not at the garage, then I should be doing the job. What could possibly go wrong? Oh. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, you ruined the board. It's time for me to use a circular saw for the first time in my life. It didn't come out good. She forgot that I'm an utter genius and that I can repair anything. Today, I've been banned from going round to the garage to work on my car by my beautiful girlfriend, Kat. All right, that's not strictly true because I do what I want, but there is a couple of jobs around the house that I've been putting off for a while, and today's the day that I'm gonna try and tackle them. If you're a regular viewer of my content, click the like button now because it's a massive help. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Marcus Hayes, and today we're gonna see if a car guy is able to tackle some DIY. All right, so those of you that follow me on Facebook and Instagram will remember that I posted a video basically asking for some advice about an issue we were having to do with our boiler. Now basically last winter, Kat noticed that we was having to repressurize the boiler every three or four days. And because of that, she decided to get one of those insurance policies where if anything goes wrong with your boiler, you only pay the call out fee. So we got that. And then at the beginning of this summer, Kat got the boiler serviced by them people because they only do the servicing in the summer apparently because obviously in the winter you're constantly using the boiler. When they serviced the boiler, they didn't find anything wrong, but they did mention that the issue we were having could be to do with something outside. I think it's called the expansion vessel or something. And that's actually something that loads of you guys replied to those social media posts about. The guy had a look at that, but he said he couldn't really go any further than servicing the boiler because we only had insurance for the boiler. And that's when Kat upgraded the insurance to cover the pipe work in the whole house. But with the advice that the guy gave Kat when he did come around to service the boiler and from doing a bit of research online, Kat sort of confirmed that it wasn't anything to do with that expansion vessel outside. So we kind of knew that there might be a leak somewhere else in the house, but seeing as the boiler only needed repressurizing every three or four days, we knew that any leak was probably only minor. Now we checked all the pipes that we could see uh, in the house and we couldn't find anything, but we basically suspected that if there was a leak, then it could possibly be somewhere under the bath, right? Because there's pipes under the bath. Also though, Kat noticed there was a, a bit of damp or whatever going on in the wall here, which is obviously the other side of where the bath is. So a few weeks ago, we decided to start trying to investigate behind the bath basically. And it was a bit of a mission actually, getting the board off of the side of the bath here. And uh, I'll talk through that story in a minute. But basically we have now, we think, found a leak on a pipe that's right back there. Let's get some light on the equation. And that copper pipe had a sort of insulating furry sort of sleeve over it. There's still a little bit left on it. And basically it appeared that that sleeving was wet. And when I pulled it off, I confirmed that it was absolutely soaking wet. Now we're not a hundred percent sure if that pipe's leaking, maybe that moisture was condensation. Maybe some of that water is, you know, where water's getting down through the seal around the bath. We doubt it though, to be honest, but it was the first indication we had that we may have found that there is potentially a leak in the system, which may be why when the boiler's being run in the winter, we need to repressurize it every few days. So we basically kind of assumed that, you know, that pipe under the bath is gonna need to be cut out and replaced. But when Kat got in touch with the insurance people, they told her that basically the insurance doesn't cover any labor involved in getting to the job. 
So that's when I basically asked for loads of advice on my social media. And um, yeah, massive thanks to everyone who did get back in touch. The first thing I learned from <laughs> advice from people is that the bath isn't as easy to remove as I thought, but there was a couple of people that said there is another option. And that option is this leak sealer stuff. Thanks to a ton of research on YouTube, Kat found out that we need to put the leak seal into the towel rail. I'm guessing that's because it's the highest point of the system and it should stop air locks. Apparently, we need to isolate the towel rail by turning these valves clockwise and then we can undo the nut behind one of them to drain the water out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If I'm here and not at the garage, then I should be doing the job. Otherwise, you could have just done it and I could have gone to the garage. With the nut now professionally undone, I noticed that the water was draining out really slow, even with a spanner keeping the pipes separated and even with the cap undone at the top of the towel rail. The leak sealer was only a one litre bottle, so once we'd drained out one litre of water, I tightened the nut back up to stop the water draining. Blah, 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 blah. Should only be used by a professional plumber and not a car idiot. With the cap fully removed from the towel rail, I was hoping to pour the leak sealer in, but there was a problem. It was still full of water. I decided to try draining the water from the other side of the towel rail, but only a little bit came out. And when I poured some water in from a jug, it only took a little bit before it was full again. With the nut at the back still loose, I undone the valve at the front, which then made the water drain out more. We figured that maybe before we'd accidentally emptied the rest of the system rather than just the towel rail. But once we'd drained a good amount out, we tightened the valve back up and the nut at the back, poured the leak sealer into the top and then opened both valves on the front of the towel rail. The next job was to repressurize the boiler, which was showing zero on the gauge. This involves putting this little plastic tool into a hole in the bottom of the boiler. Oh. 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 Snapped it. <laughs> oh dear. I managed to get it in and twist it using some pliers and then Kat turned the little white square next to it to repressurize the system. You can see here the pressure rising on the gauge. Then, as we may have accidentally drained the whole system earlier on, Kat decided to bleed all the radiators. The towel rail is bled with a screwdriver, but all the other radiators are bled with a radiator key. As it turns out, only the tail rail had air in it. So now, we just gotta get this thing out again. Yeah. Just have to get a new one of these. Oh, you Why are they made of plastic? All right, well that's now snapped off in there. I don't know why they make them out of plastic. They should be metal. We'll deal with that another time. <laughs> so now, you'll run the heat in. Yep. And then we'll be able to monitor this to see if we're still getting the issue of the pressure dropping, yeah? Yeah. All right, so next we need to cover this eyesore back up again, which isn't just gonna be a case of screwing the board back on. <laughs> Let me explain. So when we decided to investigate underneath the bath to see if there was any leaks, we needed to set about gaining access to under the bath. And the board that was on here didn't have any visible fixings. So we were basically levering between this board and this board. And yeah, it was clear that there were fixings that attached that board to the top and bottom piece. And yeah, basically I wrongly came to the conclusion that this had been put together in not an ideal order. And I basically assumed that there wasn't really a way of getting the board off without destroying it. So I decided that I was gonna cut a big hole in the middle of the board uh, and then you know maybe use a jigsaw to you know, cut more out of the middle, and then I'd be able to reach in and undo whatever fixings were there uh, to then ultimately replace the board with a new one afterwards and you know, rethink how it's fixed in. However, 
after I'd cut a big hole in the middle of the board, which you can see over here, <laughs> I then realized that my jigsaw wasn't here, it was over at my other garage. So I ended up cutting another hole in it, as you would have just seen, it's got two holes in it. But while I was going through that, I then realized that this is able to basically slide out, right? Then you can reach in and literally just undo six Allen keys, which, um, yeah, control these things. They're the kind of ones where you just sort of undo the Allen keys, quarter of a turn, and then, yeah, basically the board uh, would be able to, to slip out. But obviously by then, I'd already ruined the board. So uh, Kat has bought another new board, which is here, but this isn't the correct size. So I'm gonna need to cut this down so that it's the same size as this one, and then we can reattach it to the front of the bath. What could possibly go wrong? Using the old board as a template, we marked the new board with a Sharpie, and then it was time for me to use a circular saw for the first time in my life that was lent to us by Kat's dad. I managed to keep the first cut nice and straight, but the second one didn't come out as good. So I ended up using the circular saw to sort of shave some material off to correct my error, which seemed to work all right. Then I gave it a quick sand, and then it was the moment of truth. <laughs> Will this board actually fit in the hole that was left by the old one? Not bad, not bad. Of course it does. I screwed some screws into the bottom and top piece, and these were gonna make sure that the wood wouldn't get pushed in too far. And it meant we could fit the new board without actually using any fixings. And once I'd peeled off the protective layer, it was looking mint. That's all right. That's all right. See yeah. now, because the, them screws are in there, you're not gonna accidentally push it in. in or anything. Yeah. It's mint. And then once we've confirmed everything's sweet, big thick sealer down there, and then just a nice neat one there. Uh, maybe we'll glue this back onto the thing as well before we finally put it back together because this is coming away. So yeah, we can all, we can make all this a bit better before we actually fully seal it in. As for the boiler. We've had the heater running, and so far, we've still got pressure on this little gauge, but that leak sealer needs 24 hours to work, apparently, according to the bottle, so time will tell if we've actually solved any leaks with it. But, you know, even if it doesn't work, I think it was a good, cheap, first thing to try before we start tearing the bath out and, uh, yeah, cutting bits of copper pipe out and replacing them. But yeah, that is all the uh, plumbing that I need to do today. So now it's time for me to put my lawnmower engineer's coat on. All right, so the last time that Kat used this lawnmower, it stopped working and she instantly started looking at buying a replacement because she forgot that I'm an utter genius and that I can repair anything. Now, when it stopped working, it was still powering up. It would still rev up when you pulled the handle, but um, yeah, it wasn't cutting the grass. And I rightly assumed that these things are belt driven. So, you know, you've got a motor that spins when you rev it up and then that's connected to a belt that's connected to the actual blades that spin round when you cut the grass. So I started taking this apart to see if indeed it is belt driven. And um, yeah, it's still in bits, but essentially this bit lifts up normally. Um, and then I was just able to find <laughs> screws and undo them until I've got in deep enough. So there's a couple of screws there, one there and one there, um, which then allows this bit to come off like that. And then I wrongly, at one point, started investigating in here. Underneath these two screws, uh, once you take them out, you can lift this cap off and there's a circlip in there, which I wrongly took off. Um, you don't need to take that off at all because what you do instead is underneath here, this is all still loose from before, but this is the blade that actually cuts the grass. So yeah, that comes off like that. And then, yeah, this is able to pull off like that and then there was four screws one two three four there's two still in there one and two uh, this just lifts out yeah there's no screws holding that in but yeah basically with the them four screws out underneath 
this is then able to lift out. We've got the wire trapped in here just to keep it all neat. Around this bit was a belt. So I was right that it's belt driven. You can see you've got four screws here as well. And when they're undone, which they are, we left them loose, it enables this to slide up and down. And that's basically gonna put tension on this. The old belt is over here and it had basically slipped off and it wasn't broken. So we were gonna put it back together, but you know, you can see that it is all perished and stuff. So I thought rather than having to put it all back together and then potentially have to rip it apart again, and seeing as these belts were what, 10 pound each, we just decided to buy a new belt and not fully put it back together. And yeah, today we're gonna to put a new belt on and then hopefully this lawnmower will uh, live on to tell another story. First things first, I checked that the new belt was the same size as the old belt. Then I wrapped the new belt around the pulleys in the lawnmower. Something like that. Happy days. I used a screwdriver to put tension on the belt whilst Kat did up one of the screws. We had 90 degrees of total twist, which I thought was more than adequate. So now it was time to do the other three screws up and then put the rest of the lawnmower back together. This bit's actually broken. You can see it's got these sort of nipples that lock into holes there. There's a couple of nipples there that lock into holes in this. Basically a couple of the nipples uh, have broken off. There should be a couple of nipples on this, which lock in to these holes on here. So it means that this isn't gonna lock into this with the plastic and it's just gonna rely on the tension of this being screwed into it. Once I'd screwed the threaded piece in, I realized that my spanner wasn't big enough, but luckily I was able to just twist the blade to tighten it up, which actually gave me a lot of confidence that the tension of the threaded bit was gonna be enough. I did notice one potential problem though, the big round fan was actually rubbing on the casing of the lawnmower, but I thought nothing of it. And once this green cover was screwed back in and the grass tray was sitting back in, the lawnmower was all back together. But would it work? So the grass don't actually need cutting at the moment, but there's a few long bits so we can see if it actually works. definitely doing something. Yeah, it's weird, it was really loud at first and then it sort of quietened down a bit. So I think where it's rubbing on the plastic, it's just sort of burnt away some of the plastic and uh, yeah, it's mint. I'm sure it'll just get quieter the more that I use it as I'm the one that knows the lawn. <laughs> I don't do lawns. <laughs> All right, you now join me on the way to my boxing class, which is gonna be hell as usual, I'm sure, but it's one of the things that I do week in, week out, which mean that even at the ripe old age of 39, I feel like I'm just getting stronger and stronger every day, where, let's be honest, most people my age are just falling apart. Anyway, I digress. Today has been a very successful day, and normal services will resume in the next video because yesterday I went to visit my good friends at Burton Power to pick up something for Heidi, my hearing aid beige model up to escort. So looking forward to diving into getting that new bit installed, which is going to involve a bit more butchery to Heidi's body shell. So you'll be able to see that in the next video. But Massive thanks to everyone who's tuned into this video. As always, if you thought it was any good, please do give it a thumbs up and a share. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Click subscribe if you're new. Check the links in the description to follow me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. If you wanna get in touch with me, my email address is down there as well. Check out my website and the Petrol Head Style website using the links in the description. Huge thanks, as always, to my patrons for your ongoing support. But other than that, until next time, from me and my beautiful girlfriend, Kat, Thanks for watching.